So, the Royal Rumble. Yeah, with no fans in attendance. It happened. Certainly felt different than other years. But, they did alright considering the circumstances. Far from perfect, but overall, they did alright. And especially with the key matches and the key people, they seem to make fundamentally the most important decisions being the absolutely right decisions. And if you agree, it's your first time checking out this channel, you should smash the subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. Do it and do it now! So let's talk about the 2021 Royal Rumble. And we're kicking off with Drew McIntyre defending against Goldberg, WWE Championship match. Christ, at least CM Punk used to serve <laughs> the semi-main event when he was playing backup dancer to John Cena and Johnny Ace. Good Christ. I think so little of Drew McIntyre as a world champion. He's open in the show. And you know what? That's why Goldberg showed up in that type of shape. He's not given top-notch conditioning and lifting work for a number two champion. Yeah. Now this match, though, it didn't suck. How about that? Wasn't incredibly long from a purely official standpoint, but you had the stuff go on before the bell even rang. Um, this was fine. Wasn't it? Like a lot of y'all were freaking out because you're thinking two things is gonna, are going to happen tonight. Either A, Goldberg's going to beat Drew McIntyre, or B, he's going to lose and then he's going to enter the Royal Rumble and win. And neither one of those happened. Are you happy now? Number two retains his title. And he could go bore the brakes off of the 1.8 million people that watch Raw every week now. Yeah, it was okay. And then the whole thing about Goldberg at the end saying you passed the test. Like, that's a good utilization of a legend. That said, personally, I'd much rather would have had Goldberg win because I would have loved to troll everybody with that for the next couple of months. But that's just me. Uh, Sasha Banks and Carmella, like the most memorable thing about this to me are two things. One, Reginald getting tossed from the match in the most unconvincing style by the ref. And he really technically didn't do anything. Like he's getting attacked, so he's the one in trouble. Man, if that doesn't mimic the environment that we have when it comes to abuse. The guy does nothing, the woman hits, so the guy gets in trouble. That sounds about right. And then number two, apparently Carmella's date with Destiny was trying to see if she could kill herself on a suicide dive. And she almost did. Like that was the most intriguing thing, interesting thing about this match was, did Carmella just kill herself? I know that sounds morbid, but it's true and you know it's true. If you didn't see the show and you didn't see this dive that I'm talking about, make sure you check it out. Because it was about a couple of inches away from broken necky time. A much different bedroom situation for Corey Graves, potentially, if that would have went any worse. Props to Carmella. She did bounce up right away. Um, but yeah, this match to me was largely forgettable. I didn't really even see people on Twitter doing all that much to really praise it. It just was there. And now you can move on, hopefully pass this business and do bigger and better things with Sasha Banks, which you assume ties directly into the next match on the card, which was the Women's Royal Rumble. Got several surprising uh, appearances. Jillian Hall! Yeah, it was awesome to hear her sing again. And you know it was. Victoria. She still looked pretty good. Ring stuff, a little rough, but that's okay. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. But, you know, then you got Tori Wilson in 8K. Magnificent. Magnificent. Um, and Alicia Fox, you know, holla at your boy. That's all I'm going to say. Just holla at your boy. And this, this women's Royal Rumble match... I don't even know what to say. The star of the first half of the match, beyond question to me, was Billy Kay. Like, she absolutely took what she was given, and she made the most of it. 
She was great. She was just great in this. And even though she wasn't there for an incredibly long period of time, like she was everywhere. She was great. So props to her. You know, we got the big return of Naomi coming in at number two. That was awesome to see. And following it up with some more black girl magic with Bianca Belair at number three. And both of them obviously went a long time. Naomi went 47 plus minutes. Now, it kind of would have been nice if those two would have been the final two, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, but there was a lot of weird stuff to me with how they kind of laid out this Rumble match. Bianca Belair and Bailey have story. They have history here. And when you finally get to that moment where Bianca Belair is going to eliminate Bailey, we miss it live and have to see it on replay because they're showing Mickey James's entrance. What's up, Don? Kind of missed that one, didn't you, Toad Hole? That was bad. The other thing that really stood out to me was you have this history between Charlotte Flair and Lacey Evans, and you're playing that up. You had her Charlotte's dad make an appearance. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, one of them is going to eliminate the other, and instead Shayna Baszler eliminates Lacey Evans. Where the hell did that come from? Like, that was just really strange. You had some squirrely stuff happen in both the men's and women's Royal Rumble. Um, I will tell you that as, a, as an older and certainly cynical fan, it is hard to get a rise out of me. It is hard to get incredibly emotionally invested to suspend disbelief. But you know goddamn good and well when it came down to that final three, and it's Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and Charlotte Flair... You know damn good and well that I was terrified of the potential politics to come. So you can imagine how it warmed the cackles of my heart. Now Rhea Ripley, the last of the seven people she eliminated in this women's rumble match, it was Charlotte Flair. Yeah, fuck that bitch. Bye, bitch. You know you're getting a fucking title match at Mania anyways. That's why you were sitting there no-selling it like a dumb fuck. Sitting there laughing and smiling about it. Like, that's when you know you've got the political edge. Because you're just going to get your title shot at Asuka at Mania anyway. So you ain't worried about it. You just went out there for a payday. And we got to the final two of Rhea Ripley and Bianca. And early in the night, you had a really good spot with Bianca and Naomi as they both avoided elimination. And here, another kind of interesting spot where Rhea and Bianca are both sitting on the apron and Rhea's like, let's not do anything crazy. Let's get back in the ring. And they did. You know, once it got to these two, like I was, I was sitting there saying to myself, I'm good with either one. Honestly, you either make, I think a lot of people were like this, where Rhea Ripley winning would have been cool. It would have been okay. It makes up for killing her momentum at WrestleMania last year. Like that would have been all right. Sure, it would have might have upset some people if they went with her instead of Bianca Belair, created some disappointment. Admittedly, I would have been disappointed too, but I would have defended that. I'd have been like, come on, you could throw her a bone too. A lot of you like her, but they made the right choice. They absolutely made the right choice. Bianca Belair eliminates Rhea Ripley. She wins the Women's Royal Rumble. She goes on to get the world title match of her choosing at WrestleMania. She gonna take on Asuka? She gonna take on Sasha Banks? Well, we think we know where this is going right now. It was a big moment, and it felt like a big moment. It was presented like a big moment. The only thing I really didn't like about it, I know I'm in the minority here. I imagine that. Um, is Bianca's post-match promo in the ring, like it was genuine and is real, and I really appreciate that. But she's supposed to be the EST. Like it's going to be W-R-E-S-T-L-E-M-A-N-I-A. -E -I, I can spell. You know, WrestleMania even has E-S-T in it for God's sakes. But I don't really want to see her crying. Because yes, she won the Rumble, but she technically didn't win the title. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see that emotion maybe after you win a match at Mania for the title. Eh, I understand it's supposed to be a big thing, but... You know, like, you're supposed to be this kind of badass EST. Like, I wasn't a huge fan of the emotional delivery of the post-match promo. I'll be in the minority, and but that's whatever. That's cool. You see Triple H afterwards on Twitter posting about how proud he was of her. Well, you never put the fucking NXT women's title on her, so shut up. 
Like, how bad is it that Vince McMahon, of all damn people, is featuring a black woman better than you did, Hunter? Huh? Really? Praise God, ugh my ass. And how crazy is it to think that she's the first black wrestler, male, female, doesn't matter, to win a Royal Rumble match? To which some of the smarmy smart asses are going to sit there and say, Ooh, what about The Rock? What about The Rock? What about him? He's Samoan. He classifies himself as Samoan unless he's doing a movie with Kevin Hart. And then sometimes with Fast and Furious. Then he's not just Samoan, but otherwise he's Samoan. And the company always played up his Samoan heritage. He already always played up his Samoan heritage. So even if you want to hit me with the one drop rule, fine. But then you got to look at, look at how he identifies. Just saying. And even then, let's throw in the rock, fine. We'll get rid of the qualifiers. She's only the second black wrestler to ever win a Rumble match in WWE. To my recollection, and she's the first female one. Like, this is a big deal. Like, this is a historic deal. And when you think about the thought of potentially having her and Sasha Banks facing off of the SmackDown Women's Championship at WrestleMania. Like, this has a historical vibe to it. It has a landscape of the business, landscape of the company, perspective and view of the company is finally slowly, slowly changing. Because while you're in a land of mayonnaise, you get some spritz of some spice and some flavor here. And you're getting a little bit more of it. I did not think this women's rumble match was all that particularly good. Like I even thought they could have done a better job of Bian featuring Bianca Belair. Um, you know, some of the best spots with her involved the, the spots where she's avoiding elim elimination. You know, that works to a degree, but there are ways you could present people that really, really work. This wasn't the best. And some of the other storytelling of how they did things was kind of sketchy throughout. You know, you had some good performances. Not every Rumble match is going to be a great one. This one, I'm just going to remember for the fact that Bianca Belair won. And that's all that matters. Um, and then you get to the last man standing match for the Universal Championship. Tubby Tubby himself, Kevin Owens, taking on our number one babyface. Number one babyface. Our hero, the head of the table, the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. And, yeah... This feels more like traditional WWE. The match is going along fine, and then the finish. But even before the finish, like, they do the forklift spot. I feel bad for Roman. He's got to sit there and wait for Kevin Owens, almost 300 pound ass, to sit there and swanton bomb on top of him from that height. Yikes. Uh, but it seemed like several of the things that they did, there just wasn't a lot of selling in this match. The only time there was selling is when it came to the actual count. Like, it's a last man standing match, so I understand you're going to bend the rules a little bit. And I understand in the context of today's wrestling business, like, you're going to get this crap. But when KO is sitting there getting run over by a golf cart and doing it in a way that looked really badass, mind you, and then it feels like less than a minute later he's up whooping up on Roman, like, it's just dumb. I'm sorry. It's just dumb. But not as dumb as the whole handcuff spot. They don't always go as planned. But fortunately enough, our tribal chief was able to overcome the odds. He was able to use Samoan mind magic to get that referee to stop his count at five because Paul Heyman didn't know how the fuck to unlock handcuffs. It was Samoan mind magic and nothing else. Samoan mind magic! Samoan mind magic! But yeah, admittedly, it didn't go well. And our tribal chief, like this is not the first time that Paul Heyman screwed up recently. Uh, Heyman deserves the consequences and repercussions for this. But the right guy wins. You can't really say Kevin Owens looks bad here. Like I said, it was, you do the AEW golf cart spot, but somehow it looked better, but it didn't really. 
Because just like the AEW spot, you're not really selling shit. Um, yeah. That's kind of the way I look at it. But the right man won. And Roman, gracious of him, didn't want to go on in the main event because he knew it was the Royal Rumble. And one of the Rumble matches should main event. And he should let that winner of the men's Rumble match get their shine. And he's Roman Reigns. He's being equitable. He's sharing. And when the time comes, he will take care of his family business. Which brings us to the main event, which was the men's Royal Rumble match. So there was all types of speculation about what was going to happen here. And who was going to come back and who was going to return? Was Goldberg going to slide his way into this one? Was Brock Lesnar going to make a return? Ah, and ah, neither of those happened. Was Daniel Bryan going to come in and fulfill a lifelong quest and win the 2021 Royal Rumble? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking right. <laughs> he didn't even make the final four. <laughs> I thought I thought there was a chance they would have him win. Um, I had teetered between him and Edge. I certainly would much rather have had Edge. But at least what Danny Ryan said, if they sent him at Roman, then there is a story there. Um, but... Yeah, I'm good with this. I'm, I'm assuming some people want to cancel their WWE Network subscription because their boy Daniel Bryan didn't win. The guy that apparently told the help in the back when they asked him, uh, how white do you want to look? He answered, yes. Um, but he really hadn't done shit. Like, there's no real momentum there. There's no flow there. There's no juju or juice or zuzu with him right now. Like, he's just a dude. So no, he had no fucking business winning this Rumble. But again, just like in the Women's Royal Rumble, some of the decisions they made here were kind of puzzling to me. Like you randomly had Amos eliminate Big E. That was weird. Like you had Big E go almost a half hour, but you don't even have AJ Styles eliminate him. But even then, that's kind of silly to me. It's like, why aren't you having somebody eliminate Big E that potentially sets up a story for them? Unless you're doing some type of AJ Big E thing going up to WrestleMania, then I stand corrected. I don't know. Uh, they did really well by Damian Priest. Like, I look at Damian Priest and I say, this is a future big four WWE Network show um, opponent for Roman Reigns. That's what he should be. That's his upside. That's his potential, and they should be working towards that. And they did a good job here. They brought him in, I think, at number 14, and he went... A little bit, got a few eliminations, eliminated Miz and Morrison. You, know, you had Bad Bunny make his uh, his appearance earlier, rapping and Booker T just standing there in the GI bro gear. The way Booker nailed that choreography was ecstatically outstanding. And then Bad Bunny coming out, at least he wasn't technically put in the Royal Rumble. He did his, I can fly better than you Snoop spot onto Miz and Morrison, and it's all good. You know what, hey, to those that are complaining about the Bad Bunny thing, yeah, you know what, it, it's usually kind of dumb when you bring in these musical acts for WWE. I grant you. And I really didn't have much of a clue who the hell this guy was. But I don't really care. It only took a couple of minutes. Who cares if it was in a language you understand or not? A lot of people know who the hell he is. So these are the type of people that you should be bringing in. Absolutely. And if you wouldn't, then you're a clown. And you're exactly why... You should never be involved with anything in terms of putting together a wrestling show like this. Uh, uh, what I can't understand is how it's gotten to this point, though, that... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! He's had, what, 14 Royal Rumble match appearances? You've been doing this for a decade and a half. You sucked then, you still suck now. How the hell you're able to continue to draw an income for WWE is repulsive. And thank the Lord, thank the Lord... Thank the Lord that Kane came in and put us out of his misery, even though we got 20 minutes of ziggles. Kane looked and said, Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Apparently also said, Fuck his die, because that belly's getting a little bigger when you're the, whether you're mayor in a county of Tennessee. I really wish his libertarian ass would have come in as Glenn Jacobs with a big old fat $2,000 stimulus check. And set that bitch on fire. You want to talk about instant heat and something that connects right now? That shit would have been everywhere. That'd have been magnificent. Magnificent. Um, 
But yeah, like the way they played this out, you started with Edge and Orton again. Can, can somebody help me understand how the night before they released that Randy Orton would be one and Edge would be two. But then when it came to the actual show, Edge was number one and Randy Orton's number two. Are you not even watching your own damn shows? Can you not even at least keep the continuity for that? I know in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, but technically it does a little bit. Because when you talk about Edge and what ended up happening in this match, you're going to talk about him being number one and going the distance. Like, you think you would get this stuff right. Um, but, I don't know, like, I popped when Christian showed up just because I knew it piss off Mikey. <laughs> Mr. Rout had to watch Christian in the Rumble. Um, the Hurricane is cool for the brief moment of time he was there, but he didn't last long. Carlito looked good. You know, can't really do the apple spot with COVID, but I'd like to see him stick around more because, yes, Carlito is still cool. Well, I will say this is that the finish to this was interesting because your final four ended up being Seth Rollins, who entered 29th. Oh, yeah, that's right. Seth Rollins returned. Braun Strowman was 30. You know, kind of kills the surprise when you bring it back on SmackDown two days before the Rumble, but you did it nonetheless. And then you've got Edge. And you'll notice I left a name out. Like this whole thing went down really quickly. Is you had Seth and Edge eliminate Braun Strowman. Then Edge eliminates Seth Rollins. And in the process, out comes Randy Orton, who early on in the show, in the match, had an injury to his leg and had walked off just to only then sit there and come back at the very, very end as part of this whole fast moving finishing sequence. And you're thinking, oh my God. They had Edge go all the distance, all the way, just so that way he could do the work, so that way Randy Orton could pull some Breakfast Club Fortune of Four bullshit, skip five-sixths of the match, and then come back, RKO, throw Edge over the top rope, and he's winning the Royal Rumble. But it didn't happen. Edge ends up winning. And I was stunned. Once Daniel Bryan was eliminated, I was pretty sure it was going to be Edge. Like, I'm stunned they did it, though. Especially once they had Edge start off at number one. I'm like, are they really going to have this guy go almost an hour? They did. And I know, I could already hear it now. You're going to have some of these people that are pissy pants because the younger generation didn't win it. Somebody like Daniel Bryan didn't win it. And blah, blah, blah. Wee, wee, wee. Bitch, bitch, bitch. I thought I was negative. I thought I was a crybaby. Y'all should look at some of yourselves sometimes. Edge went almost an hour in the fucking rumble. Shame when him and Christian were in the ring together that you didn't do the five second pose. It's really a shame when they hugged it out that you didn't have the fans similar to Daniel Bryan and Kane when they hugged it out. Um, but what the fuck is the issue here? Yeah, it's an indictment against most of the talent in the back. But it's an indictment against the talent in the back, the regular that BAU talent that's there all the time because they're not fucking good enough. And you don't want to put them in a damn spot like being in one of the featured matches and potentially the main event of WrestleMania. The reason they're not getting that spot is ding dong gum dicks. They don't deserve it. I mean, who in the bluest of blue fucks, when you look at this 30-man lineup, would you have realistically, honestly chose over Edge? I mean, come on. It's a good story. He was out with injury for a period of time. Now he comes back and he wins his second Royal Rumble 11 years after winning his first one. But this time he goes the difference. He started off at number one. And you would think for all the match and move marks, that shit would carry some weight and it would matter. And you'd want some God-blessed star power while you still got it. Because Edge is not like your typical mid-40s guy that's way past his prime. He can still go. He's a phenomenal talent. He knows how to work in terms of stories. He knows how to work in terms of matches. And you assholes win almost a decade without him! A guy could see if he had been pounded down your throat the past decade, but you barely freaking had him! He's only been back a year, and even within that year, he missed more time than he was actually there! Hell no, I'm excited about the possibility of no matter where they go, you've got options. 
either Edge is sent after number two Drew, and maybe this can provide a little sizzle to Drew because God knows he needs it, and Edge will certainly provide it, or even bigger to me, let somebody like Brock or somebody deal with Drew. Let's let them handle it. Or you didn't have a fiend tonight. He wasn't there. Keith Lee wasn't there. Uh, you can find something else for Drew to do. I don't care. But you send Edge at Roman? That shit's going to be fire on the road to WrestleMania. Way more fire than the Enfuegos you would have had in your short pants over Daniel Bryan winning this Rumble. Give me a break. You're going to choose Daniel Bryan or you're going to choose freaking Edge? I know who I'm choosing, and it's not the American Dragon. I'm sorry, no offense. Ton of respect for the guy. Good hand, good talent. Could have made it work with Roman, but it's fucking Edge! And he could still go. He's still one of your best wrestlers. Like, not your spot monkey dudes, but actual wrestlers. He's one of your best storytellers. He's one of your best promo guys. He's one of your best characters. He's one of your biggest stars you got left in that measly freaking company that loses relevance by the day. And you need a WrestleMania main event worthy type of opponent for Roman Reigns. It's Edge! You assholes went almost a decade without seeing Edge. And now you're griping and pissing and moaning and bitching because Edge won? I don't get it. Oh, what the fuck are you going to do? Has somebody like Ricochet win it? <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, look at these people. Who the hell else are you going to put in that spot? I find myself in this awkward place of defending the WWE in a booking decision of theirs, when usually it's the other way around and I'm shit-blasting all over him for it. I mean, get connected with reality. Get a clue, get laid if you must, but most importantly, get a life if you think that Edge winning the Royal Rumble was a dumb decision. It wasn't. And if you were in Vince's spot and you didn't want to make that decision, you put it with like Daniel Bryan or some other bum in this match, like, you would deserve all the ridicule and the piss-poor business that you would do with that show. You got Bianca Belair winning the Women's Royal Rumble. You got somebody young, a fresh face, new talent, star of the now and the future. There's absolutely nothing wrong with counterbalancing that. Was one of the best stars you had in the past 15, 20 years. And sending him to your absolute top guy now, that shit's going to be fire if they do that. So there were moments here where the execution throughout the show was kind of squirrely. There were things here that were less than stellar. But for a rumble show with no crowd, and that makes a difference, it absolutely makes a difference. Like it was okay. I came into both rumble matches dreading the potential winner. And I am 100% happy and satisfied with both of them. Fuck that bitch Charlotte. Fuck Daniel Bryan. It ain't his time. Give me Bianca Belair. And give me Edge. That's good enough for me.